Mel Kalonka Gerard Gibson A.O. is an American actor and film director. He is known for his action hero roles, particularly his breakout role as Max Rokatansky in the first three films of the post-apocalyptic action series Mad Max, and as Martin Riggs in the buddy cop action comedy film series Lethal Weapon. Wikipedia. Born, January, the 3rd, 1956, age 68 years, Peekskill, New York, United States. Children, Milo Gibson, Hannah Gibson, Christian Gibson, Edward Gibson, Louis Gibson, Thomas Gibson, William Gibson. Upcoming movies, Flight Risk, The Passion of the Christ, Resurrection, Monster Summer. Spouse, Robin Moore Gibson, M. 1980-2011. Height, 1.77 M. Partner, Rosalind Ross, 2014. Mel Kalonka Gerard Gibson was born January 3, 1956 in Peekskill, New York, USA, as the sixth of eleven children of Hutton Gibson, a railroad brakeman, and in Patricia, Riley, Gibson, who died in December of 1990. His mother was Irish, from County Longford, while his American-born father is of mostly Irish descent. Mel and his family moved to Australia in the late 1960s, settling in New South Wales, where Mel's paternal grandmother, contralto opera singer Ava Mylott, was born. After high school, Mel studied at the University of New South Wales in Sydney, performing at the National Institute of Dramatic Arts, alongside future film thespians Judy Davis and Geoffrey Rush. After college, Mel had a few stints on stage and starred in a few TV shows. Eventually, he was chosen to star in the films Mad Max, 1979, and Tim, 1979 co-starring Piper Laurie. The small-budgeted Mad Max made him known worldwide, while Tim garnered him an award for Best Actor, from the Australian Film Institute equivalent to the Oscar. Later, he went on to star in Gallipoli, 1981, which earned him a second award, for Best Actor from the AFI. In 1980, he married Robin Moore and had seven children. In 1984, Mel made his American debut in The Bounty, 1984, which co-starred Anthony Hopkins. Then in 1987, Mel starred in what would become his signature series, Lethal Weapon, 1987, in which he played Martin Riggs. In 1990, he took on the interesting starring role in Hamlet, 1990, which garnered him some critical praise. He also made the more endearing Forever Young, 1992, and the somewhat disturbing The Man Without a Face, 1993, 1995 brought his most famous role as Sir William Wallace in Braveheart, 1995, for which he won two Oscars for Best Picture and Best Director. From there, he made such box office hits as The Patriot, 2000, Ransom, 1996, and Payback, 1999. Today, Mel remains an international superstar mogul, continuously topping the Hollywood power list as well as the most beautiful. Family Spouse Robin Moore, June, the 7th, 1980, December, the 23rd, 2011, divorced, seven children. Children Hannah Gibson, Edward Gibson, Christian Gibson, Louis Gibson, Tommy Gibson, Lucia Gibson, Lars Gibson, Milo Gibson, William Gibson, parents Hutton Gibson and Patricia Gibson, Riley, relatives Donald Gibson, sibling, trademarks, often acts and directs stories involving an individual who is persecuted and fights for justice, has often portrayed a widower, in films such as Mad Max, the sequels, Lethal Weapon film series, Braveheart, 1995, The Patriot, 2000, Signs, 2002, and Edge of Darkness, 2010, often portrays men who seek revenge for the murder of family or friends, rugged, chiseled features, rich, gravelly voice, piercing blue eyes, often plays angry or deranged characters, intense acting style, trivia, almost turned down the role of William Wallace in Braveheart, 1995, because he thought he was too old for the role, he asked the producers if he could direct it instead, a compromise was made, he could direct the movie if he agreed to portray Wallace, he was a mentor to the late actor Heath Ledger, his father, Hutton Gibson, moved the family from upstate New York to Sydney, New South Wales. Australia, in 1968 after winning as a contestant on Jeopardy! 1964 for The Passion of the Christ, 2004, which he directed, wrote and produced.
he spent $25 million of his own money. Back in 1992, he started doing research for the movie that was not released until 2004. Has a horseshoe kidney? Two kidneys fused into one? He took up acting only because his sister submitted an application behind his back. The night before an audition, he got into a fight, and his face was badly beaten, an accident that won him the role. In interviews promoting The Passion of the Christ, 2004, Gibson admitted that depression had led him to contemplate suicide, and that he made the film to heal himself. Turned down the role of Kyle Reese in James Cameron's The Terminator, 1984. Quotes. I like directing much better. It's more fun. That's all there is to it. It's essentially the same job, which is storytelling, but you have more control over the way you want to tell the story. It's a high. I love it. My fears. Everything from being afraid that I'm going to run out of cream, for my cornflakes right up to someone chopping my privates off. On his involvement in Braveheart, 1995, as actor, director and producer, if you're going to wear three hats, you'd better grow, two more heads. There is no salvation for those outside the church. I believe it. Put it this way, my wife is a saint. She's a much better person than I am. Honestly, she's like Episcopalian, Church of England. She prays. She believes in God. She knows Jesus. She believes in that stuff. And it's just not fair if she doesn't make it. She's better than I am. But that is a pronouncement from the chair. I go with it. On his religious beliefs, I'm not a done deal. I'm a work in progress. I'm still extremely flawed. You can't live up to what people expect. Nobody can. But I guess that's my problem, not theirs. About the The Passion of the Christ, 2004. This movie is about faith, hope, love and forgiveness. Themes that are as important now as they were in Jesus' time. I wasn't exactly the most zealous keeper of the flame, you know. I was a pretty wild boy quite frankly. Even now when I'm trying more than I was before. I still fail every day at some level but that's being human. I'd like to be able to wake up early every morning, but I don't. I'd like to quit smoking. I'd like to never lose my temper. The list goes on and on. I'd even like to get dressed by myself and not have other people watching me. I did a lot of crazy things so I'm surprised to be alive. On human embryonic stem cell research, I found that the cloning of human embryos will be used in the process and that, for me, I have an ethical problem with that. Why do I, as a taxpayer, have to fund something I believe is unethical. The fear-mongering we depict in this film reminds me a little of President Bush and his guys on Apocalypto, 2006. I feel a strange kinship with Michael Moore. They're trying to pit us against each other in the press, but it's a hologram. They really have got nothing to do with one another. It's just some kind of device, some left-right. He makes some salient points. There was some very expert, elliptical editing going on. However, what the hell are we doing in Iraq? No one can explain to me in a reasonable manner that I can accept why we're there, why we went there, and why we're still there. On his decision to cut a scene in which Kifu says, his blood be on us, and on our children, soon Pontius Pilate washes his hands of Jesus, I wanted it in. My brother said I was wimping out if I didn't include it. But, man, if I included that in there, they'd be coming after me at my house. They'd come to kill me. Asked whether the Passion of the Christ, 2004, would be offensive to Jews today, it's not meant to. I think it's meant to just tell the truth. I want to be as truthful as possible. But when you look at the reasons Christ came, he was crucified, he died for all mankind and he suffered for all mankind. So that, really, anyone who transgresses has to look at their own part or look at their own culpability. Vatican II corrupted the institution of the church. Look at the main fruits, dwindling numbers and pedophilia. Time, January, the 27th, 2003. I might go and go somewhere no one can find me. You know where that is. You know where the place is no one can find you. I was thinking of pitching my tent right next to the weapons of mass destruction. Then no one would find me. I got to a very desperate place. Very desperate. Kind of jump out of a window kind of desperate. And I didn't want to hang around here. But I didn't want to check out. The other side was kind of scary. And I don't like heights, anyway. But when you get to that point where you don't want to live, and you don't want to die, it's a desperate horrible place to be, and I just hit my knees, and I had to use the Passion of the Christ, 2004, to heal my wounds. Asked whether his opposition to abortion and support for capital punishment makes him feel isolated in Hollywood, some kind of a dinosaur. No, you know you have to have these opinions about these things. I'm pretty firm on stuff like that. I don't feel like I'm howling in a hurricane. I just try to do my bit the way I think it should be done. I probably sound like some egotist, you know, saying that the Roman Church is wrong but I believe it is at the moment, since Vatican II, 1990, opposition to the Passion of the Christ, 
2004, kind of put me back on my heels a little bit. I expected some level of turbulence, because when one delves into religion and politics, people's deeply held beliefs, you're going to stir things up. But it was a surprise to have shots being fired over the bow while I was still filming, and then to have various loud voices in the press, people who hadn't seen the work, really slinging mud. Asked if he felt besieged by the opposition to the Passion of the Christ, 2004, besieged. No, not really. They're pretty pathetic actually. I sort of look at them now, and feel sorry for them. They've given their best shot. They kind of came out with this mantra again and again, and again, he's an anti-Semite, he's an anti-Semite, he's an anti-Semite, he's an anti-Semite. I'm not. But they like to say that in newspapers. So it's kind of how those, anything repeated often enough slowly amalgamates into some sort of accepted truth. Obviously, Nobody wants to touch something filmed into dead languages. They think I'm crazy, and maybe I am, but maybe I'm a genius. There's something to do with the Federal Reserve that Lincoln did, Kennedy did and Reagan tried. I can't remember what it was. My dad told me about it. Everyone who did this particular thing, that would have fixed the economy got undone. Anyway, I'll end up dead if I keep talking. My biggest weakness is that I'm excessive. Fortunately for everyone concerned, I'm not as excessive as I used to be. I think the Lethal Weapon movies contain my favorite performances. It sounds really crummy, I know, but although the work doesn't look hard, it's difficult to create effortless on screen. What worries me is that people will take this as fact. I'm not angry, per Southeast, that it refutes everything I hold sacred, the foundations of my beliefs. The Da Vinci Code, 2006, is an admitted work of fiction but it cleverly weaves fact into maverick theories in a way that will appear plausible to some. Salaries. Signs. 2002, $25 million. We Were Soldiers, 2002, $25 million. The Patriot, 2000, $25 million. Chicken Run, 2000, 1 million pounds. Lethal Weapon 4, 1998, $25 million. Conspiracy Theory, 1997, $20 million. Ransom, 1996, $20 million. Maverick, 1,994, 15 million dollars. Lethal Weapon 3, 1,992, 10 million dollars. Air America, 1,990, 7 million dollars. Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, 1,985, 1 million 200 thousand dollars. Australia, The River, 1,985, 500 thousand dollars. Mad Max 2, The Road Warrior, 1,982. $120,000, Australia. Galley Poli, $1,981, AE35, 000. Attack 4C, 1982 AE1000, Weak. Mad Max, $1,980, $15,000, Australia. Summer City, $1,977, $400, Australian. Oh.